Welcome to this session on the formula editor and calculations in SAP Business Objects Cloud. My name is Ivor van der Zand, SAP Global Analytics. And on the screen, you see me uh, starting up SAP Business Objects Cloud Wave 1.24. And you see some of the embedded functions that I'm going to explain to you already plotted on the screen. To work with the data that I've created, I made a very simple Excel file over here that you can download from the article composing of five years of data for every month a metric. So from 2016 till 2012. And I created uh, four or five products, apples, pears, oranges, salads, beans and broccoli. I even used a hierarchy in my model, uh, rolling up a few to fruits and three others to vegetables. And I created two uh, very simple metrics. As said, you can uh, download this Excel from the article and I invite you to make the Excel a little bit more complex to do some more very nice things with the formulas. Let's uh, start with the first formula that you see over here plotted in the screen. And uh, to do so, um, we are going to talk about the year over year uh, formula. And basically year over year uh, is defined as a percentage showing the difference between uh, the value of a member in the current year versus that value in the previous year. And it does check whether there was a previous year existing. So the definition is uh, Y or Y, and you just uh, key in your metric, your account type. Uh, it refers to the identifier of that account type. But if you just key in the first two or three letters, in my case, sales, S-A-L, then it automatically returns. And you can see how it's automatically plotted. I also created a very simple cross step for you uh, with uh, a number of the formulas I created. Over here is the year on year, and you perfectly see that we do not have a measure in 2012. Uh, let me go to a slightly higher aggregation level, to level 2 in this case. And you see 2012 12 is, of course, empty and perfectly plotted the percentages year over year for all the other years. The next one that we uh, will touch um, after the year over year is the um, compound average growth weight. Um, this is a slightly more, uh, I would say, advanced um, measure. The compound average growth weight, it's very important. The definition of it is very strictly identified and available on the web. Um, being um, the, uh, the annual growth weight uh, has divided the value of a member at the end of a period in question by its value at the beginning of that period. And both ways to result to power of one divided by the period length. Uh, and that result subtract one from the subsequent result. So please have a look uh, because I noticed that a lot of people misuse the KGAR definition. Have a look on the web. It's the definitions that is being applied in this product. So I made four KGARs for two, uh, three for 2016, comparing towards 2015. As you can see the formula over here, just key in the KGAR metric and your two, two time periods. And I did the same uh, KGAR 2015, where I compare 15 to 14. Um, and more. You can see the results plotted over here in the cross tab. And of course, the cross tab is not a very good way to visualize KGAR because it returns the 2016 number for every year in this case. But uh, way better uh, below, you can perfectly see it split it up per product. And in the second graph over here on your uh, lower left side, you see where I plotted my three KGARs into one graph, uh, uh, graph together with the actual sales number. A KGAR to my stance is um, typically also used as a KPI tile to just plot the metric. 
Um, and again, uh, don't do it by time, but uh, for example, by, by product type or another attribute to make it as much value. The one that really surprised me is the simple moving average metric. And the simple moving average metric is calculated by adding the value of a member uh, for a number of time periods and then dividing that uh, total by the number of the time periods indicated. Yeah, and I've done it over here twice. Uh, once uh, I used the SMA um, for the most recent three years. And in the second line, you see the definition over here. So you can use year as a part of the function. And in the second element, I used month, but you can also use core. I will explain you the SMA in a bit more detail. So what it basically does, it is a rolling uh, time series calculation. So for example, if you define SMA month level three, it means it calculates the average of the current month, the previous month, and the uh, current month minus two. So it's a rolling average, and that is very, very useful. I will show it in the example over here, where you can see, for example, let's uh, pick one of the, the metrics. Um, let's pick, for example, 160. And if I look at 160, that is the average of the actual of that month being 70. The previous month being 130 and the month before that being 280. Okay, so it's a rolling average. If I go one month further, you will see that is the average of the current month, the previous month and the previous month minus one. To me, I was quite amazed by this uh, initially simple function that is very, very powerful. You can use it on month, quarterly, and year level. And for me, it's really a delight. And I've used it many, many times to really do a rolling average, uh, also in planning modes, in my analysis. I use the SMA three months in two graphs, as you can see over here. Below a similar example, now using the SMA split it over the various products. The next two functions that we are going to look at, look at are the lookup and restrict functions. And these functions uh, are very similar, but they differ in the way the results uh, are being visualized. If I start with restrict, with restrict, it allows me to, for a specific account uh, member, filter on a specific point of view, even nested, if I would want to do that. The results are visualized only for those metrics that are part of my filtering, meaning that if I restrict on apples and beans, I only get a measure for apples and beans. Opposite to the lookup function that visualizes in another way, the lookup function returns the aggregated value of the result of the filtered members. Meaning that if I look up for oranges and pears, then all members will get the value for oranges and pears. And especially, you can see it over here very well in this little graph, Especially if you work with a hierarchy, the lookup result can have a result that you do not want to use. 
So be very careful deciding whether you either want to use a restrict or a lookup member because it might affect the results. Over here you can see the difference very well. The lookup returns the same value for all members even though I selected broccoli and orange. Yeah? Whereas the restrict version only results measures for the metric I defined. Thanks for watching.